Okay. I also am lucky enough to work with VCs. Um, and what's interesting about VCs is they all have the similar, same sorts of challenges that CEOs do. Now, this is a story about a VC that I work with. I've changed her name. Her name's Victoria. One of the symptoms I'm seeing with her and her firm is they just keep missing out on deals. The deals are not, they're there at the early stages of the conversations, but the deals are not there. They're not moving fast enough. You dig beneath the surface, there's disagreements about, amongst partners about who they should back. Some of their term sheets are being shipped around. They're losing out. And what's interesting in talking through the challenges with Victoria and the other partners at the firm is that all of them are in a scarcity mindset. They're all worried about protecting their money, protecting their investments, not thinking about the times that we've all had before when there's been abundance in the world, where they've been operating from a place of power, where power has driven their thinking and been pushing them forward. They're offering them a place, a place of scarcity, which is holding them back. And a big part of what I do with, with the leaders that I work with is I have this one concept, name it to tame it. Once you understand where you are, what the problem is, what the challenge is, you can do something about it. And the big shift that I worked on with the VC firm was changing their mindset from scarcity to abundance. They were reacting because of scarcity, not acting because of abundance. Again, on the quiz, have a look. Are you operating from a place of scarcity or abundance? Many of you, if you're in the growth stage, you're absolutely in the abundance mindset. Many of you, if you're later on, if you're seeking funding, your roadmap's running, your runway's running out, you're operating from a place of scarcity. That will absolutely change your mindset. People can smell scarcity and it's not very attractive. People love abundance because it's powerful. And all it requires is a mind shift to know which of these you're in to help you move forward to the one you want to be in. How many of you are, are parents out there? Any parents out there? A few of you? Right. One of the biggest lessons that I've learned in terms of working with CEOs is it's the same as having kids. And the same is true if you're a CEO. It's a lot like having lots of kids in your company. The same things you do when you've got with your kids, you can do with your employees as well. Let me maybe tell you about another story. This is another founder called Jenna. Um, just closed the Series A round. And Jenna was a fantastic early stage founder. She was across everything. She knew the answers to everything right there and then. The business was fully and completely under her control. But what started to happen was that superpower that she had early on was not the superpower that was giving her strength going now. In fact, it was counting against her. Staff were leaving. She was being accused of micromanaging. Bad decisions were happening. Her mind was being changed by things all the time. She went from this quite decisive person to somebody who was all very much overbearing in terms of the team. And the reason was is because early on, she confused umbrellas with something else. So this is my daughter. This is Liv, she's six. Every day, because I live in the UK, I have to check the weather app to see if it's gonna rain that day. If it's gonna rain that day, I give her an umbrella. Now, I know what you're thinking, those parents out there, well, that's not a very good way to teach your little girl if she needs an umbrella or not. You've got to let her get wet, okay? And that's exactly what you do. You know, I, I don't check. I tell her to check. She doesn't check. She doesn't take her umbrella. She gets wet. She learns, okay? Parenting 101. 